guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today we are going to be talking all about the new Shark Flex Style, which is supposed to be a $270 dupe for the $600 Dyson. So to test that theory out, we are going to do a comparison review in today's video. I will style with the Shark on one side of my head and the Dyson Airwrap on the other so that we can see for ourselves if this $270 tool is truly just as good as the $600 one. I do also still have the original model of the Dyson Airwrap in addition to this upgraded version. So while I will be styling with the upgraded version, I will show you guys the attachments on the original Dyson compared to the Shark and the new upgraded Dyson as well. Just in case any of you guys still have this, because I'm sure many of you do. Let's start off by comparing the bases of the stylers and the different control settings that they have. Both stylers contain three different heat settings and have some different options for heat settings, but they're not exactly the same for each. So on the Dyson, you have have two different heat settings and a cool shot setting. Whereas on the Shark, you have three different heat settings in addition to that cool shot setting. Both brands claim that these tools will reduce heat damage through the use of internal temperature regulation. So unlike other heat styling tools that may continue to get hotter the longer that you use them, the temperature regulating settings on these are supposed to prevent that from happening. So for the Dyson, this measures air temperature 40 times per second to ensure that it doesn't exceed a temperature of 302 degrees Fahrenheit. The Shark actually measures the air temperature 1000 times per second, which I think at first makes it sound like this tool is going to be significantly less damaging than the Dyson, but I would not say that at all because this tool gets significantly hotter than the Dyson, especially on the highest heat setting, but even on the medium heat setting, this thing gets so, so hot. And I was trying to find the different temperature settings on Shark's website, but I wasn't able to find it anywhere. So I don't know exactly how hot this gets, but it's to the point where it was like burning the skin on my neck. So the fact that they are marketing this as a product that will not cause heat damage whatsoever is kind of absurd to me. There's just no way. If this can literally burn the skin on my neck, it's damaging my hair. Just because the temperature is being regulated doesn't mean I'm not putting something hot on my hair, which will cause damage. So I just personally would not buy into that marketing gimmick. There's just no way that putting heat like that on your hair is not causing damage. So I would not personally use this at the hottest temperature setting. I do actually like the fact that it gets a little bit hotter than the Dyson because I feel like that just allows for faster styling. Then I don't have to hold my curls as long. So I'm sure there is some sort of trade-off there, but again, don't use the hottest one unless you want your skin to melt off. All right, let's move on to the attachment, starting off with the drying attachment. The upgraded Dyson drying attachment has a skinny vent down the center, which will just dry the hair as normal, but it also has a smoothing function, which helps to smooth flyaways and create a sleeker look. I really, really love that addition to this dryer attachment. I definitely think it is a nice upgrade from the original Dyson air dryer, which just has this one single vent and it is definitely larger than the upgrade. The shark dryer is not supposed to be used vertically like the Dyson air wrap. Instead, you actually pivot it to create this angle. It looks a lot like a traditional hair dryer in that sense. And the reason for that is that is going to give you more precision with direction of airflow. So that in combination with the fact that this has a concentrated nozzle, I think allows you to get a really nice smooth sleek result, even though this doesn't have a specific smoothing function because you can just, again, be more precise with where the air is actually going in comparison to the Dyson. As you can see here, the size of the vent for the airflow is a lot smaller on the shark dryer attachment than it is the original Dyson dryer. I think that that makes for faster, easier styling. So I think that shark beats the original dryer for the Dyson by far. But even when I compare the shark to the upgraded Dyson dryer attachment, which definitely has a much slimmer vent for airflow, I still feel like I prefer the shark. I think it's more powerful than the Dyson for sure. And even though the Dyson has that smoothing attachment, I feel like I get the same smooth result with the Shark in just one go versus having to dry all over and then use the smoothing attachment on the Dyson. All right, let's move on to the paddle brush attachment. So with the Dyson, you get two different options, one for coarse hair and one for fine hair. And that is the same exact way that the original attachment
attachments are set up and they're super, super similar. So for the purpose of this comparison, just know that everything I'm saying about the upgraded version of the attachments is pretty much the same as with the original for the paddle brush. I do actually have a video where I do a detailed comparison of the original Dyson attachments to the new upgraded attachments. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will list that below. But yeah, pretty much same deal there. The Shark only comes with one paddle brush attachment and it's set up quite a bit differently than the Dyson paddle brush. So instead of only having plastic bristles like the Dyson, it has a combination of plastic bristles that are more widely spaced apart with softer kind of boar-like bristles mixed in. So at first glance, it kind of seems like the Shark may be gentler on the hair because of those soft bristles, but I don't actually think that that's the case. The plastic bristles on the Shark are really, really sharp and pokey and they definitely tug on my hair more. I noticed quite a bit more hair pulling out when I use the shark brush head than I do with the Dyson. However, in saying that, you definitely do get a much sleeker, less frizzy look with the shark than you do with the Dyson because this has significantly more tension or pull on the hair than the Dyson does. So strictly in terms of the results that I'm getting, I do have to say that I prefer the shark again here over the Dyson, even though I don't feel good about the fact that it's yanking out my hair. So if you are interested in using this and you do want something that gives you more of that tension than the Dyson, I would just say make sure that you're drying your hair like 80 to 90% of the way before incorporating any sort of tool like this. Because if you're going in with something like this on wet hair, the breakage. All right, let's move on to the round brush option next. So first we have the original and the upgraded Dyson here. Same exact size, same kinds of bristles. I have voiced my complaint about the round brush attachment in the past. I just wish they had different size and length options. It's a little too short. I wish it was a little bit bigger. Then for the Shark, I actually wouldn't even consider this to be a round brush. It's the same exact thing as the Conair One Step Styler where it's this really large oval shaped brush versus the Dyson, which is actually round in shape. And this oval brush has the same setup for the bristles as the paddle brush, where we have a combination of long, sharp, pokey plastic bristles that are actually pretty flexible and the soft bristles mixed in. The Dyson does not have any of those soft kind of hair-like bristles. I run into the same thing with these attachments that I do the paddle brushes, where I feel like I get a lot more tension and pull with the Shark than I do with the Dyson. I will say that's always been an issue that I have had with this Dyson round brush attachment, it just does not have enough pull. So I can't get nearly as smooth a look as I can with just my own separate hair dryer and a round brush. But aside from the smoothness of my hair, I actually prefer the look that I get with the Dyson over the Shark because with the Dyson, you get that true like round, flippy, curled blowout look that you get at a salon. With this huge oval brush, you don't get nearly the same kind of look it's just so big, the shape's completely different, so you can't get that same really bouncy, flippy look. I'm just not a fan of these oval brushes, and I actually think that they're more damaging than just a paddle brush like this, because even though you have the same amount of tension, you're also then pulling and twisting on your hair at the same time, which is just going to make it that much more likely that your hair is going to snap and break off. So I did still test it out just for the sake of this review for you guys, but I will not use this oval attachment ever again. If you do want to use it, same exact recommendation here as with the paddle brush, do not use this on soaking wet hair. Make sure your hair is like 80 to 90% dry. Go like 90 to be safe. Now for the moment that I am sure most of you have been waiting for, let's wrap up this video by comparing the curling barrel attachments. The original Dyson gives you two different barrel size options and there are two barrels for each size option for different directions of airflow, which has since been upgraded with the new Dyson curling barrel attachments. So again, you have two different size options here, but only one barrel for each size because you can change the direction of airflow with this nozzle up here, which is very convenient. The Shark only comes with one size option and you have two different barrels like the original Dyson because they are for different direction of airflow. The issue with this one is that none of these barrels are the exact same size and length. So I have the standard version of the original Dyson curler and it's significantly shorter than the Shark. So I didn't want to compare those. When I got the upgraded Dyson, I did get the long length instead. So they're more comparable in length, still not exactly the same, 
but the Dyson is a little bit larger and wider than the Shark. So obviously that means that I'm not going to end up with the exact same result in terms of the size and length of curl, but still we can compare and see how well they actually curl my hair in comparison to one another. The biggest difference that I noticed between these two is how tightly my hair wraps around the barrel. So with the Dyson, I do feel like my hair doesn't fully wrap closely to the barrel, like it's a little bit loose. And I didn't notice that until I used the Shark because with the shark, my hair wraps much more tightly around it. Like it gets right up close to the barrel. So that could definitely make it more damaging than the Dyson. But then again, I feel like I run into that same kind of trade-off where I don't feel like I have to leave that barrel on my hair as long with the shark as I do with the Dyson in order to get the same kind of result. And again, even though my results are not identical because of the difference in barrel size, I get just as good of a curl with the shark that I do with the Dyson. If the curling barrel on the shark was longer and it had the same functionality as the Dyson where you can just twist for change of airflow instead of having to swap out the attachments, then I think I would pick the Shark over the Dyson because I do feel like I can style more quickly. But for now, because this is longer and works better with my hair and is more convenient with that change of airflow, I think that Dyson wins here, but it is close. Final thoughts on Shark versus Dyson. The Shark is great. If you are somebody that is not able to or not willing to spend $600 on a heat styling tool, which I completely understand, and $270 is something that you would want to spend, I say 100% go for it. I think you'll be really happy with it because you're getting a lot of the same things that you're getting with the Dyson in some situations even better. But if you are torn between the two and trying to figure out which one to purchase over the other, here's my two cents. If the main thing that you're after in purchasing a styler like this is a really beautiful, smooth, sleek, frizz-free look, then I do think that you'll be happier with the Shark. I think it's easier to achieve that with this and with the different attachments. But if preventing damage is your main concern, then I still feel like the Dyson is probably a better option. I know Shark says it doesn't cause heat damage, but again, I just feel like there's no way that that's true based on how hot this tool gets. So if that's your main concern, then I would personally recommend the Dyson. It doesn't get nearly as hot and a lot of the attachments, those brush heads, are not as rough on the hair as the shark attachments. Obviously, regardless of the tool that you're using, you're applying heat and pulling on your hair either way. So take that with a grain of salt. I'm just really trying to be nitpicky about pointing out differences to hopefully help you to make a decision. If the shark came out with some gentler options for brush heads, different sizes, and changed the functionality of the curling barrel to be the same as the Dyson upgrade and gave us some more size options, I feel like using it at a lower heat then would make the shark a no brainer. But until that happens, I feel like there's not as clear cut a winner. All right, you guys, that is it for this comparison review. I really hope that you found it helpful and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you currently own any of these tools? What are your thoughts? Are you happy with it? Are you looking to switch? Are you interested in testing out the Shark Flex Styler? If that is the case, or you wanna pick up the Dyson, I will have all of these tools listed in the description box of this video and keep me posted. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, you know the drill. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for your support in doing those things. Thank you for watching this video. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days, but until then, I hope you have a great few days.